Hello, Facebook, YouTube. Today I got to talk to you, be real with you about... See, let me tell you all about religion is... <laughs> is I mean, is this poisonous pollution that has a f messed up, you know, the reality of Jesus Christ, you know. And I keep telling y'all, I keep stressing how much religion has, you know, messed up the image of Jesus Christ. But it has messed up not only the image of Jesus Christ or how to become a true Christian. And it's important to know what is a true Christian is all about, you know. To be a Christian, actually, you know, in the process and procedure. Now, you know, look. Now, I can show you that, you know, I can prove it to you according to, you know, uh, Moses and the children of Israel and the life of the, the ch uh, children, of, I mean, the disciples, Jesus Christ's disciples, according to their pattern is what the idea we're supposed to follow in the process of becoming of God, becoming of God, kind of look at it that way. You know, becoming of God, a true Christian, and stuff like that. See, the thing is, the children of Israel, y'all know the story. You know, uh, they finally, you know, Pharaoh gave up and gave up the uh, people of God. You know what I'm saying? And gave up the people of God, and, and, and now they're in the wilderness. Now, it's the same idea. They got saved in when they, you know, was in Egypt. They got saved. And they, when they got saved, they went out of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? But they were on their way to, you know, God was leading them. They was fought. First of all, they were following the man of God. See, now when you've been in bondage for so long, the first thing you got to do is follow the man of God. Now, you you still could you're still gonna sin. You know, if everybody got this thing, when I get Jesus, I'm just gonna stop sinning. That's a lot. But you know, you but what happens is you start developing a desire to want to be free. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens. Everybody think is you know something. I just stop sinning. No, that's not working. You know, that's not gonna work because. First of all, the reality of grace is to help you in the process of becoming a better Christian when you sin. You know, it's like when you weaken, you're strong. But anyway, so the thing is, you go to this process and you get out of out of bondage, out of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? And then you go to, you know, God put you in a place and where, you're, you know, the people that once slave you, Satan, whatever things that in the world that Satan got you in bondage in, you know, money, sex, and drugs, and material things, they represent Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is going to come at you again. He, he's not going to give up. You know what I'm saying? The things of this world that you content, you know, has got you in bondage are not going to give up on you to try to get you back in, you know, Egypt. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to give up. So what God is going to show you in your process of, you know, getting out of Egypt you know what I'm saying? He's going to show you that he is the, going to deliver you. He's going to show you. He's going to. So, so Moses got them by the Red Sea. You know what I'm saying? And and they, you know, really, you know, sent up there waiting for their enemy. Because, well, in the kingdom terms, because that's what God positioned it to wait for Pharaoh's army to come to show. Because God set this all, this whole thing all up to show the children of Israel that he is the deliverer. He is the deliverer. Not the children of Israel the deliverer. He is the deliverer. You know what I'm saying? See, and the problem is people think, oh, I'm supposed to stop living right. I mean, I'm supposed to stop myself from doing wrong. I'm supposed to stop myself from smoking and drinking and cussing and fussing and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. Look at the image. Who is the deliverer? God, God is the deliverer. Ain't none of the children of Israel didn't, you know, try to push no body of water to the side of the river. You know, they were worried and discouraged if they was going to get caught by, you know, the uh, Pharaohs and his army, you know. <laughs> See, and the thing is, but, you know, God has to show you. And as Jesus shows us too, same thing, that he is the deliverer, not us. We're not the deliverer. Now, anyway. So you know the story. He delivered them from out of Egypt, and now you know they saw their enemies being destroyed, right? 
okay, but they get, gets, you know, out there in the, in, out there in the Sinai Peninsula, and all of a sudden, Moses had to go get the laws of Ten Commandments. And when Moses left, all of a sudden, you know, they up there like, hey, let's go worship a golden cow, you know? I mean, look, they're delivered. Watch this, they're delivered from their enemies, but still they went and got a golden calf and started worshiping Baal. Hmm, that sound familiar? You know, the thing is, we get delivered by certain things, but still the, the flesh is still inside of us to, you know, want to go back and do the set things that we used to do. You know what I'm saying? They worship a golden calf, and then all of a sudden, you know, they, you know, think that, you know, uh, oh, we're going to worship because uh, Moses is not here. And all of a sudden, you know, you know the story. God, came, Moses came back, dropped the Ten Commandments, and, you know, bam, mad. You know, why y'all worshiping the golden calf? You know, and the thing is, you know, they, what happened was God opened the sea up, I mean, opened the ground up, and people got swallowed in, you know, because they was worshiping the golden calf, you know. Crazy, ain't it? And after you did, delivered them from sin, they still had the goal to, you know, get back in it. And it's crazy, you know. And the thing is, what we need to understand, you know, we will do stupid stuff. <laughs> we will make stupid mistakes, you know, after we just got delivered and stuff. And that, you know, is a part of the um, becoming a Christian, man. Everybody got this thing like, oh, I'm supposed to automatically stop doing sin. No, that God slowly but surely give you the ability to start doing, giving you the ability to, to start doing the right things, you know, and learning the right things and applying the right things and start becoming right. You become righteousness. That's what it says. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, the scripture says, you know, in Christ you become, you become a new creature. All, all things have passed away. All things become new. You know, we're supposed to become this thing. We're not supposed to be right. We're supposed to become right. And through the process of being faithful and hearing the word of God and, you know, applying little by little, even though you sin, you know, still continually to strive up, do it, and you accomplish it. And that's what, you know, got to understand. And it's now the same thing happened to the disciples. You know, the disciples were a bunch of, you know, we would have considered them a bunch of nobodies, you know, nobody special and stuff. But Peter is what I want to focus on, the disciple. I mean, Peter, you know, cussing mad he ain't had no fishes couldn't get no fishes all of a sudden jesus came in the boat bam cast it on the other side boom got you know fishes like whoa this guy get fishes so you know the thing is so pete like whoa you you can do great things you know say so, you know but hey jesus said i'll make your fishes a man come follow me so peter follows him so peter you know uh you know just like anybody else you know any other sin i keep telling people that peter represents a whole lot of people that are becoming you know a sinner becoming a christian big time because there's been many times in the bible you read you know i read you know in matthew 16 that it talks about that peter said something and you know jesus told peter get behind me you know satan get behind me you know satan you know he called peter satan sometimes i mean he read it is in matthew 16 i forgot what verse it is but it's near, you know, near the end of it. But he says, you are, you became an offense, Peter, you know, and something like that. And, you know, Peter made so many, you know, mistakes. And, you know, when the, the transfiguration happened, when Moses and Elijah showed up, Peter was like, you know, joking around and say, hey, whoa, y'all got this, you know, thing going on here. Jesus, hey, let's build tents or tabernacles so we can, you know, invite you know people from you know israel to come check it out you know more than like make a movie theater peter is a prone person of good you know putting his foot in his mouth so many times you know and of course y'all know the famous one you know say you know jesus i will never deny you oh i will never deny you you know what i'm saying like, jesus said you deny me three times like no no i won't deny you all of a sudden bam he denies him you know this is him and he's following jesus See, that's the idea you got to understand. He's following Jesus, but yet he's making mistakes, but he's following Jesus. G Peter didn't say, oh, you know, I did something stupid. Oh, I'm not going to follow Jesus anymore. No, he kept on following him. Even though he denied him, you know, he kept on following Jesus. And the thing is, 
That's the idea of the process of becoming a Christian, of becoming something of God. That guess what? You're going to make mistakes, but that's where grace is come. And the Bible says that God's grace is sufficient. You know what I'm saying? It's going to, when you weak, He's going to make you strong. And, that, and that's about the molding and shaping process of Jesus, of God giving you the ability and the strength, you know, to become like Him. You know what I'm saying? And that's what... You know, you have to look at the process of Christianity. That God will give you the ability to become like Him. And the more we humble ourselves, first of all, be honest and humble ourselves to God's Word and, you know, follow it through in spite of the wrong things we do, the more we become new. You know, old things will pass away slowly but surely and all things will become new. And we become the Christian, but we just got to stay faithful to the process of how it works. Because just like Jesus did, he became sin and knew no sin when he drank the bitter cup and became sin and endured affliction and endured and endured. And at the end result was raised up from the dead in three days and became new. You know what I'm saying? Through the process, you know, it was ugly. But he made it through, and he wants to let you know if I was got through the ugly and made it through, I can, you know, through your ugly, I will make you through to become of the image and the likeness of God. That's how we got to see this Christian walk, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm supposed to be this Christian, and bam. No, you become a Christian, you know, and, and be patient. And with the, I tell people, encourage people, fellowship with people, share the word of God with people, come in agreement. You know, with the word of God, in spite of, you know, your sins or whatever you are, keep sharing the word of God. And I have to use, you know, the woman at the well, you know, the woman at the well, she was worshiping other gods. You know, that's what they did in Samaria, you know, but yet, you know, and God told her, you know, about that she had five, you know, husbands. But still, you know, she didn't, you know, get mad and upset, and say, well, I'm going to leave you alone and get out of my face. No, he was like, she went to the city and said, come see a man who know about me. She was, you know, sharing the word of God in the city. She wasn't offended that, you know, Jesus talked about a business. But she, you know, said, hey, you know, this man wants to give me a, you know, a water that I will never thirst no more. She was focused on the solution and not the problem of sin that was inside of her life. You know what I'm saying? But she still shared the word of God. And all these kind of, I can go on and on and on about the process of becoming a Christian. But, but look at it for what it is. Sorry, religion has distorted the view of truly becoming a true Christian. And I guess, you know, me and others got to clean this process up so you can see the right, you know, the right way of becoming a true Christian. And that's, you know, the following according to the word of God concerning what God and Jesus already established for us to truly become a Christian. And if we do that process, like I tell people, it's called caterpillar to cocoon butterfly. That's true Christianity 101. You know what I'm saying? Process, process, process. That if you're faithful unto God and following it leads to success. Okay, I hope I get... Hope you receive this. I hope you understand this. I'm not here to condemn nobody for being a wrong sinning and whatever. All sin and fall short to the glory of God. I'm all about you becoming the image and likeness of God and enduring whatever sinful nature that you have to, you know, endure to become the image and likeness of God and encourage you each and every day. All right? All right. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say and hope you become the image and likeness of God and reflect Jesus Christ all the way. To God be the glory to Him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.